lamp worker, glass maker, I'm a gardener, a collector, a designer. There's yeah, a lot of different facets to every day um, of making. I'd done part of my study and then travelled. Was doing the typical Aussie thing of working in a pub, ridiculous hours, getting paid you know four pounds fifty an hour. From there, started to travel around Europe and went to amazing little places, and then went to Venice and the island of Murano, and I was just mesmerised. It was like I'd found my thing finally. You know, we'd go past little windows of people doing traditional lamp working which at that stage I'd never seen. Like I was only aware of the um, big furnace work and that sort of thing. You know, I've been to the jam factory and seen bowls being made. But until that point, I'd never seen the lamp working, which is, you know, small scale over a, a, a small flame. And I just, I, I knew that I had to, to learn how to do it. And when I came home um, from those travels, uh, my turtle tank broke <laughs> and the only glazier that was open. Uh, it was a little place on Unley Road and they were just about to start teaching lamp working for the very first time. And I was like, it's a sign. Um, so from there, did the course and I've just been doing workshops ever since then. a residency over at Square Peg Studios in Sydney, which is a studio that is modelled on the sort of structure that we've got here. And, and that was really fantastic, doing working in another studio. And I started photographing a lot from the Botanic Gardens in Sydney. And the plants that they've got over there are a lot different to what we've got here. And I was able to see, um, I was led into the archives of the Australian Museum, which have a number of the Blaschke father and son collection of sea anemones, which were just amazing. They are my glass idols. <laughs> um, and so to see that was amazing. And a lot of the pieces, you know, the public do doesn't get to see. A number of the pieces were actually broken, which was, you know, really upsetting to see, but it was also kind of amazing because I could see the internal structure and how they were made which really informed the making that I then took on to do these really fragile glass plants. So I started the work over there and then brought that back here. You know, I've made a lot of things, but I'd, I'd never produced a body of work, I suppose, that I was really proud of and that I'd wanted to invest so much money in getting photographed and then producing a catalogue. A very special show to me because, you know, I actually ended up dedicating the show to my grandfather. He was an accountant, but an amazing gardener. His last property, I think he'd planted maybe 400 different species of trees and things. And he kept these journals. Every time he bought a tree, he'd write it down, how much he paid for it and, you know, where it was planted. and. In the back of the journals was, you know, rainfall from every day and temperatures and things like that. And they're all meticulously written. And so I was able to have those um, pieces in the show as well, which was, you know, which was a really nice connection, I think. And people could see you know, that record keeping and, you know, how fragile, yeah, memories are, which was the whole idea behind the show. The, the nature of memory and how fleeting our moments in life are. And I collect and hold memories very dear. I have a bit of a, um, a fear of forgetting those things. So yeah, to sort of try to capture those moments in the plants that I've made. Part of the making, I suppose, with the plants was uh, as you can see, I've got photographs of loads of plants. I spend lots of time in the garden. I don't try to create plants that are exact replicas of nature. It's more about my memory of those plants, I suppose. I was sort of like that double, double dipping in, <laughs> in that really, you know, the fear of forgetting. But then also the, the nature of my memory and creating from 